Hi, I'm Reverend Andy Larson, and this is my wife, Carrie. And welcome to our second uh, video series on sharing stories of our Muslim friends. So tell us who we're going to meet today and how you got to know them. Well, you're going to get to meet uh, Safi Kaskas, and he is a Quranic scholar, uh, international businessman, and um, he actually is not my neighbor, so we'll, we'll learn some things about that. And it's unique, but also very compelling. So this interview is a little different. Um, you, did a, you recorded a remote conversation. Um, so far, the focus on this series has been uh, about meeting our Muslim neighbors and how we can engage locally. But you chose Safi even though he, he lives a fair distance away and that you have a more of a kind of a remote relationship. Why? Yeah, several reasons really come to mind. Um, um, but maybe by way of a little more introduction, um, Safi is a thought leader. He's a um, Quranic scholar and just a, a very key person. I met in 2011 initially and there was a click. There was something about him. Um, he spoke a lot about Jesus and uh, being a Muslim follower of Jesus, which for me um, just kind of crashed initially. I thought, how, do, how can you do all of that and be both of those things in the same person? Um, but he, uh, he speaks and reads the Gospels. He, he speaks and actually teaches from the Sermon on the Mount. And really, as a, as a person from the Middle East, there's some interesting insight that he brings. Uh, but another thing that was important, kind of an answer to this question, Carrie, that you, you raise, um, that I think is something to offer to um, people who may not have a Muslim neighbor. So our relationship, Safi and I, uh, mostly connect through social media. And he posts very um, purposefully, intentionally about his own journey, what he's learning, what he, what he believes about certain verses in the Quran. He also talks a lot about um, the Bible, and actually the, the, one of the books that he wrote is the Quranic translation with kind of cross-references to the Bible. So Safi is a um, compelling voice, a very important person to engage, and also I think a, an example of how we can, even though we don't have a Muslim neighbor, we can actually engage Muslims in the world that we, that we inhabit somehow, some way. And um, so thank you for joining us in this journey. And um, I think you'll be challenged and inspired by the story of Safi. Well, Safi, thanks for joining us. Um, we're joined uh, today with, uh, by Dr. Safi Kaskas, a, a friend of mine. He's a Muslim brother who I met first in 2011 at a conference. And um, we're going to have a wonderful time, I think, uh, introducing you to some of the uh, Christians that um, will be listening to this. And uh, you have been, for me, a, a friend, but also an, a very important mentor in um, this work of, of peacemaking, um, also encountering Islamophobia, which is on the rise as we, as we observe in, in our world, but also in the United States. And we need, we need more allies like you uh, to help us understand Islam and, and to journey in this work of peace. Um, but you, you, have, um, you have used a term that I, I like to use, and I'd love you to explain it a little bit more just from your perspective. You, uh, you tell people and tell audiences that you're a, a Muslim follower of Jesus Christ. And yes. I know that confuses people. They, they think, how can that happen? How can that be? Yes. Um, well, tell uh, us a little bit, please. Sure. Thank you. Uh, an average Christian will hear this and think that, gee, Safi converted. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, any Muslims who knows anything about his religion and reads the Quran cannot be considered a Muslim unless he or she believes in Jesus, hmm. not as a man, not as just another person, not just another prophet, but the Quran thoroughly described Jesus as the miracle of miracles. 
has a, he is a miracle of God. He was a miracle before his birth. He was a miracle in the way he was conceived. Mm. His mother was chosen as per the Quran from among the women of the words, plural. Special, very special. Very special. Yeah. Her womb was prepared twice. Once to receive him because he's not just another child. Yeah. Okay. And then to have him and to deliver him. Mm. So we're talking here about a person who is very unusual, miraculous from before he was born. His birth was miraculous. The Quran states a lot of things that the Gospels don't say about Jesus, but they're all miraculous. Like I'm going to state them to you. People have the right to believe or not believe, but this is what the Quran taught us Muslims. And that's what we need from you because you're a practicing yes. Muslim. Tell us what, yeah, what you're holding. Yes, I'm a practicing Muslim. Yes. Yeah. I pray five times a day. I just finished my morning prayers here and I'm coming to you today from Dubai. By the way, we didn't mention that. Wonderful. But the, the, the Quran states that while Mary was delivering Jesus, he spoke to her, calmed her down. <laughs> We're talking about a baby who wasn't even fully born yet. Right. Then God says that Jesus was born knowing the book, the Torah, wisdom, and he was strengthened. We strengthen him with the Holy Spirit mm. throughout his life. So uh, just for clarification and helping people understand, are these um, actually uh, verses from the Quran that uh, support this? Yes. Or these are hadiths? No, 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 no. I don't, I'm not going to mention any hadith, so I won't confuse people. Right. Everything I'm going to talk about today will be verses from the Quran. Uh, yes. I should mention up front, too, that you are the author with David Hung Hunger Hungerford. Uh, God bless this you. is a, a resource I use a lot. It's the Quran. Yes. Um, it's, a, it's a modern translation, and I know some people argue on whether or not you can actually translate the Quran, but it's, it's, um, it's a wonderful book, and it also has references to the Bible. So it, there's things that help us understand uh, um, some close, close to 3,000 references to the Bible, 3, not just wow. close, that it's amazing. over 3,000, it's 3,200 plus references. We'll so, talk about the book in a second, but I, do, I want to go back to Jesus in the Quran, because yes. that's, I mean, it's very important for me to explain to people who wants to go to the Middle East to introduce us to Jesus. Right. Well, heck, he was from over there. I mean, <laughs> we, we know him very well. Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, he was born with full knowledge of everything and speaking. Right. So yeah. Mary was out, out of town. Uh, yeah. you, you may say uh, hiding because suddenly she's pregnant and she, you know, I mean, people, uh, people will accuse her of all kinds of things. Yes, it's not that they did not accuse that. her. They did accuse her anyway, yeah. but she was out of, she's a young, young lady and suddenly she's pregnant. She realized that this is a miracle. She realized because uh, the angel told her that she's chosen. So mm. she, w she went out of town to deliver. She delivered and came back bringing her baby with her. So the minute she got to town, women started stopping her. What's hmm. this have you done? Who's this baby? Who's it was the scandal, she right? Pointed, she pointed to him. And this is when he spoke to the public yeah. and told them who he is. You know, Muslims believe that Jesus, not only a miracle, but he is the Christ that God spoke about and right. promised to the Jews to be the, the Christ of God, the Messiah, Yeah. The, you know? So, so Muslims believe that Jesus is the Messiah, is, is Christ. Mm -hmm. Jews don't. Yet in the United States, we believe it's a Judeo-Christian culture. Yeah. And they omit Muslims. 
Right. Yeah, that's, believe that's a little Jesus. bit of a historical bias that we have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we believe in Jesus. Give us our fair share. Yeah. Give us a seat on the table so we can talk about it. So um, we, we will go into some of the uh, fine details of, of, of some of the theology because um, yes. I don't want to um, confuse some people. Uh, and this is also part of the important journey that, that we share is that we, we bring and we, we acknowledge that our holy books uh, teach different things. And so we don't, yes. you and I don't subscribe to the exact same um, teachings of, of who Jesus is, but that does in, in no way um, force a wedge between us or the capacity to love one another and to speak and to learn from one another. So th at the outset, I think that's important. Um, and people, people and the, I didn't say uh, that when I say I follow Jesus, that doesn't mean I follow the theology of Christianity about yes. the Trinity. Uh, uh, I, 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 yeah, I follow Jesus' teachings. Yes. When I was 16, I got a gospel and marked it with a yellow marker. Everything that Jesus said, mark, I marked with a yellow marker. <laughs> and then I went back to the Quran and tried to see. Is there any contradiction between what Jesus is saying, what the Quran is saying? I didn't find any. Yeah. So from the age of 16, I chose hmm. that to follow Jesus as that special gift that God gave to humanity. You know? And I also follow the Quran because I don't see any contradiction there. So I, I remember uh, when, when we first met and you were, you were teaching our group <clears throat> and um, you were you were speaking like you were just about uh, Jesus from you know from your understanding in the Quran, but you were also quoting the Bible extensively, and um, that was the new thing for me <clears throat> was to be learning from you, and you you helped me pivot really in in my relationships with Muslims to understand that Jesus was not. Um, a stranger to Muslims and Jesus, even as I read and understand uh, the Gospels, especially, uh, is not uh, is not a source of conflict in in most places. Even though, even though there's some differences in teaching, so if you could tell us a little bit um, how I mean how you got to that point, because because uh, all Muslims don't read um, you know the teachings of Jesus yes. in the Bible or understand that. Mm -hmm. How did you get to that? Because the Quran told me to, to, to read the, 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 the Gospels and the Torah. The, see, the Quran is a very ecumenical book. Hmm. It's a book of unity. It's not yes. a book of divisions. Hmm. The Quran teaches that the Torah has enlightenment and guidance hmm. to its followers. The Gospel has enlightenment and guidance. Hmm. To its to Jesus followers. Yes. So, how can I not read these books yeah. when I know that they're from the same source as the one who gave me the Quran? If God gave this this guidance and right. enlightenment yeah. to Jews and to Christian, why not gain something from it for myself? <laughs> 